All right, so today's an interesting day for Fanatec owners. They announced QR2. What QR2 is, is a replacement for their quick release, also known as QR1, which is this guy right here. Why is this important? It's important because QR1 wasn't perfect. It was pretty clear that this was a design that worked uh, when the torque was much lower. And as torque numbers grew, Fanatec had to modify the design and all the way up to the DD1 and 2, and I have a DD1 here. So they added this rubber ring, and that not only increased the amount of time it takes to take a wheel on and off, but some people found that they had a little bit of wobble in, in their wheel. Uh, it would be nice to get to a QR2. Um, it does look like it's even more secure. Also, the amount of time it takes for it to come on and off is way, way faster. So the way that the new quick release works is that you pull this back, these two little bars move, and you can pull the wheel right off. And when you push it on, you don't need to pull back any, any springed rings. You just push it on, it goes right on. All right, so there's a lot of people that are putting out videos about the new QR2. I don't have one in hand, so those are gonna be better <laughs> videos to watch if you wanna learn more about it. But the short story is, is that you need two pieces at least you need one for your wheelbase, one for the steering wheels themselves. If you have more than one steering wheel, of course, you want to buy more than one QR2 wheel side piece here. The most important thing is that you get the correct base side piece. And the DD1 and DD2 get the Type M, and the CSL DD gets the Type C. Now, um, between the QR2 wheel side pieces, there's three. And I think the one that almost everybody wants is obviously sold out this is probably what i'm going to get at least for one of my wheels and at least when it comes back in stock the one that um i'm less interested in is the qr2 light wheel side piece this is going to be made of uh, more plastics and yeah it's it's for the lower end wheels for entry level wheels but um those don't really mix well with the podium. I mean, they'll work, but it'll reduce torque and that's not really what, what you want. Oh, and then a, a key thing to point out is that these things come in bundles and you can save some money if you get it in a bundle where you get both a wheel side piece and a base side piece. Um, but the real thing that I wanted to talk about today is actually this thing. And this is my QR1 stream deck mount. And the way that this works is that it's actually magnetic. So you can actually take this right off of the regular stream deck base and then just pop it down right there. Of course, you don't want the wheelbase on. Uh, you're not gonna use this as like a steering wheel. It's just a place to mount it. Because I realized that when I wanted to be in flight sim mode, that this thing was right in the way. And yeah, this, uh, this has worked really, really well. So far, this channel has had mostly sim racing stuff. The whole point of the channel is to show ways to have both a sim racing and flight sim slash space sim set up all in one rig. And this is a key piece that really seems to make that work. And also it's taking advantage of the steering wheel base being there, which if this wasn't a thing, then, this, then the steering wheel base is really just in the way. So. Putting it to use is really nice. And then, um, yeah, I'll show you guys how, how it works. All right, let's get going in DCS. And right now I'm learning the F16, so slowly, <laughs> I'm slowly learning this awesome plane. Now I have two other stream decks here. These have a more conventional mounting method that I came up with, where it just kind of slides right on there. And you'll find a lot of these models on the web. Um, these are also the first generation of Stream Deck mounting style. So the 15 key has two versions. One that has a dock that just kind of rests in there and a new version that's magnetic for the 15 key. The uh, 32 key here in the middle, this has always been magnetic only, uh, as far as I know anyway. But yeah, so I switch over to 
the F16 page here and you'll see that <clears throat> we have a list of buttons that are represented both here and in the clickable cockpit. So what's nice is that I have two trackpads here. I can point and click. These are really nice because you know you can look around the cockpit and um, click just about anything. But this is this is better. <laughs> so um, you can click just about. I, definitely not all of the switches, but there are pages here. So like, you'll see here are the buttons that are represented in front of me. So like, if I want to go to air to air mode, I can click that and I'm in air to air mode. And the other really neat thing is that these buttons have state. And what that means is that it's communicating with the game. It's not only sending the signal to the game saying, hey, you push this button, but the game is replying back saying, okay, this is the current state of that button. So I, I just pushed this HUDVEL task button down. I pushed it again. Now it's at ground speed. I pushed it back up HUDVEL cast. Um, or let's see, uh, RF silent. Now it's RF norm. And you can see this same switch over here, point with the mouse cursor which I can control here as well. But like I said, the trackpads aren't as quick. So if I'm flying straight and nobody's shooting at me, the trackpads are mostly fine. Um, especially I can like zoom in here. And I can move this stuff around, right? That's fine. But if things get hairy, having buttons on the HOTAS is best, right? Your hands are there normally, but if they're not, the second best place is on the stream deck here. That's really the gist of it. Now, I, I should probably do another video that explains how all of this works. I'll link to a how-to along with a link to with the F-16 pages. It's QR2 day. I, I wanted to share my QR1 stream deck mount. I'm sure that there will be models of the QR2. Both ends of it are going to be shared at some point by someone, it would be even better if Fanatec did it because then we knew that it would be right. Um, not that we want the whole model of everything, just just the outer shell, guys. That would be amazing. All right, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.